So this is how far we got with our videos so far. We sketched an inspiration-based um, fantasy creature. I was looking at some different Pokemon designs as inspiration, especially for the pose, this one, but also some aspects of others. Thought about where I could get different references that might work. Some of those I had time to put in, some of them I didn't, like the badger uh, forearms and claws. And by the deadline, this was where I was able to get it finished off. And recognizing, like we did in our presentation critique, that there's still more that I can probably do before I actually make use of this concept. Now, there's, here's the difference between concept art as a job and actual production art. So concept art is done quickly. It tries out lots of ideas. You want it to look good, but mostly it's about showing someone the potential of an idea. So even if the tail isn't totally cleaned up, a concept artist would just quickly composite this into a roughly painted you know, digital background forest, and it would look fine. And if certain things were a little bit blurry, that's fine. It gives animators or video game designers or uh, film producers an idea of what that creature would be. And they say, okay, yeah, we want that. Now I want it to be on two legs instead of on four. <laughs> you know? And you go through all these different versions of concept design. Once that concept is approved, then you go into the production art phase. And production art means you need to make that art into something usable. It's usually a different job. It usually involves 3D modeling. And that's what Digital Honors is now going to be doing once they finish the coloring on their, their logos, their coloring on their characters. Digital Honors is now going to make a 3D model, make a production art model of one of their concepts, whether it's a product with their logo on it or whether it's a character. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up, but I'm also going to show you how we can make this production ready. So we're already giving our idea approval. We're going to use it in something. So to clean it up, I already showed you how you can merge into one layer, right? I'll show you that again because it's important. So we take all of the different aspects that build our creature, the ones we use and the ones we don't use. We turn them on. We can... And I like to build three different backgrounds. That's important enough for production art phase that I'm going to show you how to do it again if you have not built different backgrounds into it yet. And I also want to think of what my initial inspiration was with my sketch. And if there are any layers I don't need anymore, that are not useful, I can turn those off. So I don't need this layer. I do need that one. And this one is, I don't need anymore. Yeah, okay. So, once you've turned on every layer you want, instead of cleaning up all the edges on those individual layers, which can be a real pain, I want you to turn off all of your backgrounds. So it's just an empty grid behind. And then you go to your topmost layer that's turned on. For me, it's the clone stamp layer. Remember, I do that as a separate layer on top of everything. That really helps to even out things. And then you hold down Option. By holding down Option, we can now go to the Layer Tools at the top of the screen and say Merge Visible. If we don't hold down Option, that will collapse all the, the layers that have the eyeball turned on and make them one layer. But if we hold down Option, it will make a new layer that combines all of those layers together into one combined layer, which is very helpful, that sits on top. There it is. That means I can turn off all the layers underneath it and have all the pixels in one place. Why? Because then I can just use my lasso with certain feathering, and I can cut it out. 
especially with a tablet, especially for like softer, furrier textures. I can give it more variety, more what's called jitter. And then just delete. Now this is when I put in the different backgrounds so you can see your edges more clearly. Because whenever you use it in production, you're going to be putting it on to different settings. And you don't want those edges to have any debris or any halos or anything unexpected. So let's create backgrounds. I'm going to do them on top of my sketch layer. To create a new background layer, you go to the layer options at the bottom of the layer window. And it looks like a post-it. You click on that, that will create a new layer. It will create it on top of whatever layer you've selected. Another way to do it is to go up to layer options and say new and then layer and then it'll ask if you want to name it and then you say okay and it will put it in. So the post is just a little bit faster. Then you go to edit and you say fill. Whenever we want to get a completely uniform fill, we do edit fill. We don't use the paint bucket. So we go edit fill and then we're going to choose a white at 100% normal mode. It will fill the background with white. That helps us see that edge. Then we're going to hit command J and duplicate that. And then we're going to fill the next one with middle gray, 50% gray using edit fill. And then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to do the third one, edit fill black. We're going to do this whenever we make a production model. So when we make a logo, we're going to do this behind our logo. So we know it shows up on all the different backgrounds we might want to use that logo. When we make a spot illustration, which could be for a t-shirt, for a sticker, for a tattoo, we want to do these three backgrounds, make sure it looks good on all backgrounds. All right. So now, when I cut out, I can actually see with clarity on three different backgrounds how clean it is and if there's any halo. Now, I already started this with the last video, so I'm going to turn off the merge and I'm going to go back to the old one. And I cleaned up a lot of it. And while I'm cleaning that up, I might see things that still need work, especially when I see it on different backgrounds. So, using that two pixel feather, I'm now using my tablet and I'm going to go in and show this fur and leaf edge. If I really want to be exact, I can zoom in more, but I'm also trying to work on deadline. But never zoom in more than 200% because otherwise you're just working very slow and detailed on things that aren't going to be visible to the human eye. Now the great thing about a feather, whoops, so you redo. The great thing about a feather is that it gives you a slight gradation at the edge. So this is just two pixels. And you see that's fairly sharp, but because it's gradated, if I hit delete more than once, it will keep biting away and it will make it a little bit softer, a little bit softer. Like a great song to play at weddings. A little bit softer now, a little bit softer now, a little bit softer now. So that's the advantage of using feather. If you don't use any feather, if you just do zero pixels, then delete is delete is delete. It will always delineate right between exact pixels. It won't gradate it at all. This is also something called anti-aliasing. So now that looks a little bit more like fur. I'm gonna continue that process. And maybe as the tail gets softer and furrier, I might delete it a few more times after I make the selection to feather it more and more and more. Now, am I going to get every hair here by going quickly and not really zooming in and delineating each one? No, I'm going to lose some. 
But as long as the creature idea, the concept is clear, then I'm doing my job. And I like to do it in chunks, delete, hit, um, delete a few more times, soften it up. Now I look at other parts and I see, oh, that part of the eye, I think I want to change that profile a little bit. Otherwise it looks like he's kind of swollen. So I'm going to trim that. And then this part of the jaw looks like a lot of fur there. I like it, but I need to extend the, the gray color a little bit. So what I'm going to do is use clone stamp, but instead of doing it on a layer on top, I'm just going to do it direct. And I'm going to do it at a lower opacity with a soft edge. And I'm just going to start blending these together right in the layer, like extending the darkness of the jaw. Same thing with going around the chin there and the fur on the chin. You can darken it a little bit. So clone stamp is one way that you can retain texture and darken and lighten. <laughs> and fill in some of these areas. We've talked about clone stamp a lot in the last few videos. But this is using it directly instead of as an overlay. But sometimes you'll get these little halos. So dodge and burn is also very, very helpful. I'm going to finish up with a little bit of this color from clone stamp. All right. So I can also burn those edges. So I'm going to burn the midtones with a large soft edged burn tool. And I can burn those outside edges now that they're cut out and kind of knock down that halo of lighting that doesn't quite match. And if I need to, I can even switch my burn tool to burning the highlights. Now I always use burn at below 30%, usually below 20%, because it can make changes very quickly. And any edges I think need it, I can knock them down a little bit, especially really strong rim lighting. And you want it to build subtly. That's a great way to, I can do it in a more targeted way, to mitigate some of the halo effects you get when you use magic wand and cut away, like I did from the top of the ears. Now that everything's merged together, it also allows me to use burn just to add some shading, you know, where there should be cast shadows, like under the neck. especially when you use it on the midtones, right? It's a powerful tool. You don't want to overuse it, but this is kind of fine tuning. And you're not, you don't need to worry about destroying your pixels because you have it all on the layers underneath. This is trying to make it into a production model that's very, very clean. So dodge and burn. And this gets it ready to submit for your portfolio, but also gets it ready to use for our proving ground, where we start to actually place this creature into an environment. And remember, this is not painting. This is still compositing using other people's pixels. But I'm really making pretty distinct decisions about where the lighting should be 